I'm Stella Zhukovsky, the Director of Quality and Workforce Development at National Day Nurseries Association and we're here at Hollis Road Preschool. What we're really hoping to find is some exemplary practice in paediatric first aid planning. We're really interested to understand how practitioners apply the learning in the workplace following the training that they've received and if they're confident and competent to be able to do that. Let's go take a look. Hollis Road Preschool Playgroup started uh, about 1970 um, and we moved to these premises in 2002 from the local community centre. Um, we have 23 children on register. Uh, they come two days, three days, some five days. We uh, are volunteer staff. There's no salaried staff at all. There are eight of us and all are trained in first aid, which is very important as it is the safeguarding of part of the safeguarding of our children. What methods do you use then to provide for sufficient first aid? When you're thinking about planning, what methods do you use to plan? Um, the local authority put on courses that we uh, attend. Um, although really we're only supposed to send two of our nominated first aiders due to the fact that we are quite unique in as much as um, we're all volunteers and everybody works different days and different times. Uh, but then two years ago we had um, a, a, a couple of people left to get jobs and suddenly there was a big emergency. We didn't have enough people to take the children to afternoon nursery uh, after our wraparound lunchtime mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. So we um, I decided that we had to sort it out immediately, so I booked um, a, a trainer that we have that, that the authority recommend, and they came to my house, and the staff all came, and we were all trained in first aid. Mm. We did it over several nights. Um, we actually used some funding that we'd raised in our um, our sponsored bounce mm -hmm. about two months before. We hadn't spent it, fortunately. Um, um, and we use that, although there is money in a pot um, because of my banking background, I worked for 20 years in NatWest, I've always made sure that there was emergency money there. That was emergency, if we hadn't have had the fundraising money, we would have used that. Um, and and it's, it, it, it worked very well, suddenly we were all upskilled and that was absolutely great. Mm. Um, the other members of staff who were trained did extra hours and extra days to cover um, until we needed, until we were all trained in our first aid. Um, because to us, uh, and using the fundraising, it's more important for us to, to have safety than it is to buy another piece of equipment. It, it, it's part of our safeguarding and it, it's, it's a big issue because there's, these children aren't, you know, they're, they're left by their parents and they're left in our care and we have to keep them safe. Yeah. Yeah. You've talked a little bit about um, your cycle for budgeting for training. Have you got any um, children with specific need in the setting that you might need additional support for in terms of staffing and, and paediatric first aid qualifieds? We've got, we've got one little boy who's been with us two or three months and we are waiting for him to be assessed. Um, and for a few for a few weeks we really struggled because we were he, he, he's got no concentration span and was everywhere mm. um, consequently everybody was watching him um, minor accidents that we would not usually have happened and we thought this can't go on we've mm. got to sort mm. this so we have now got a rotor the days he's in so that um, one staff will give him 20 minutes of their time and he's a lovely little boy, very, very sweet, but he's just got so much energy, they'd have been dead at the end of it. So mm. I, I had a rotor, discussed it with one of the girls, and we decided we'd have a rotor of 20 minutes each mm -hmm. to watch him for the safety of everybody else. And so far, it's working. So, so you manage your funding and you manage your risk within the setting in terms of staffing. Is there anything else that you take into consideration then? We using your risk assessments and thinking about how you work in conjunction with your, your volunteer team? We, we do a lot of talking. 
when the children go home at half past 12, we've got somebody who's cleaning, we've got somebody who's doing paperwork. Uh, and that is, that is the time that if there's any problems, we get them sorted then, because we're, we're talking about them. Um, and in the morning we all get together and if there's anything, if there's a special activity, we'll be making sure that there's things in place so there isn't any risks, mm -hmm. you know, so we've eliminated those risks. You can't eliminate them all, but so we're minimising, mm -hmm. you know, any risks that might occur during the activity that we've planned. Okay. How do you evaluate the effectiveness of your staff in terms of paediatric first aid once they've been on the training? Um, well, I, I feel as mums, and most of them are mums, well, lots of them have got mums who are, you know, teenagers, um, so they've got a lot of basic first aid, and I feel that it reinforces what they've already know, um, and it may pull them up short on something, as it did with me when I, when I did the training, and I'd always gone on the assumption that if everything was bigger than a 2P, mm then that was fine, but it's a lot bigger than a 2P because we have choking tube that was given to us. Um, so that made me think, oh, you know. So I'm sure there are other things that when we did the first aid training, they thought, oh, and, and it just makes you think about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, uh, and the other thing about it, I find that when you've got the knowledge, you're actually calm when you're dealing with it. Because mm -hmm. when you've got a child who's hurt, the most important thing is not to panic. Mm, mm. And I feel as though they've got that basic knowledge and it's reinforced when you go on a training. Mm. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, they're sort of upskilled and they know how to deal with it mm. so they can deal with it mm. calmly. Do you observe the confidence in the, in, in the setting then, in the nursery? I, I, yeah, I feel as though whenever they deal with any incident, you know, a little girl tripped over the leg of something and banged her head, you know, and, and they were just calmed her down, you know, did the TLC and the cold water. We rang mum and mum came and by the time mum came she was absolutely fine. You know, but it was, there wasn't a great deal of panic, it was just sorted. Um, and that's, that's the way they are with everything that they, that they do basically. In terms of then accidents and reviewing what's happened, do you re what do you do in terms of reviewing your accidents and near misses? The chances are we've eliminated it before it's gone. We've got a piece of equipment that I've noticed and I've stuck it at the back there. Um, it, its legs are going a bit, and I think all oh, splinters. So I've put it there, and we're going to take it home, and my husband will put new feet on it that are nice and and um, you know no splinters in it. Um, but these are the sort of things we've usually eliminated them before they happen. We've never had a run of anything that we've needed to take a piece of equipment out. Hello, my name's Elaine and I've been working at Holly's Preschool volunteering for two years now. I've got two grown-up children of my own so this is the thing that I do at the moment. Um, tell us a little bit about the qualifications you have. I got the paediatric training and first aid. Only yesterday I went on training with the rangers, so I've got qualification for outdoor activities now. The Solly Hill session and numerous other for two-year-olds to four right. qualifications. Okay. So tell us a little bit about your paediatric first aid. What knowledge did that training give you? Well, obviously it was very beneficial for working with such young children, especially because here at our setting we have snack time, so things regarding if they would choke on food or when they're running around, falls, bumps, bruises, knocks to the head. Mm -hmm. So it's been very informative. Okay. And in terms of the first aid training that you received, how confident did you feel that you, that you could apply it when you got back into the workplace? Well, when I was first trained, I didn't feel confident because I've never come across a situation of an emergency. Um, but after the training, I felt much more confident. Am I capable of you know, helping somebody or even at home with my own children? Mm. So, as a result of your training, have you had to apply anything here back in the setting? Well, with working with such young children, we find bumping of heads can happen quite often. So. In a situation like that, if the bump was only slight, usually apply a cold compress. And if the incident was more severe, I would use my paediatric training to obviously treat the injury 
for its severity. So if it was the case of an ambulance being called or me checking the child's airways, the child was still breathing to assess that and put maybe in recovery position and to contact the parents immediately of the situation that's occurred. Thank you. Sheila, if you've got a final piece of advice for a volunteer run setting to be able to plan effectively for paediatric first aid, what would it be? Well, first of all, ensuring that everybody is trained. If you've got people doing different days and different times, you need to be sure that you've got somebody at all times first aid. And to enable you to have that training, uh, make use of any free training that the authority may offer, um, but also keeping a pot to one side some money so in an emergency you could actually maybe run your own first aid course, find somewhere to do it and, and get a trainer in and, and, and run it. Um, and within the setting to eliminate as many accidents as you possibly can, um, it's communication, it's talking about things, it's ensuring that if there's any activity or any piece of equipment that is uh, that could have potential risks, either eliminating it or putting in special measures to ensure the issue is safe. Thank you so much for letting us come along to speak to you today, Sheila. You're welcome.